Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be explaining to you what a permission scheme is in Jira. I'm going to be going over every permission that you can configure and give you some tips and tricks on how and what you should be considering when you're reading each one of these permissions. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like, and if you have any questions about anything in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. All right, so this video is technically a part two, last week's video. Last week we covered global roles, and so just having roles in Jira doesn't actually really do much. Having these roles that we created last week, or in my last video where I talked about the roles, the administrators, developers, and users, isn't very powerful. They're just a role. And so today I'm gonna go into the permission schemes and I'm going to show you how we can take we can take these roles that we created in that one video and how we can enable them, how we can empower them in the permission scheme. And you're going to want to make sure you subscribe and you're going to want to make sure you drop a like because in the next week's video, I'm going to be showing you then how to put it all together and how it actually comes into play within a Jira project so that you can manage those access and permissions to your Jira projects. But today we're going to be talking just about the permission scheme. So to get to the permission schemes in Jira, you're going to want to be a site administrator for this. You're going to click on the gear. We're going to go down to issues. And on the left hand side over here, we're going to make our way all the way down to the very last item, which is the permission schemes. A best practice here, something I like to do is I like to just copy the default software scheme and then go from there. Now, the reason that is, is because if I click on add a permission scheme, and I'm making a brand new one. And I click add here. You'll notice that when I go to actually look at it, it's completely blank. It is like way, way blank. It's just a completely empty canvas. This is okay, but there's one critical thing that's missing here. And let me show you so that when you so that I explain it, why why I don't recommend going this route. Right. And so the reason here is when I compare that brand new permission scheme that I just made with like the existing one, obviously there's going to be some pre-configured differences, but the main thing, the, the thing that I want you to highlight and look at is, is that lasting add-on project. This for, for other plugins or other just capabilities built into Jira, they don't even have to be like an external third-party plugin, but just stuff in Jira like automation rules those will break because they will not have the right access. And so if you if you do a completely new scheme, you're gonna have to sit here in this scheme and add it all back in. And rather than just doing that, I'd rather start with a, with a template that already has information and then just modify from there. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to update and add like the administrators because some of these things already do make sense, right? You want the role administrators to be able to administer projects. And then you want the Atlassian add-ons project access to pretty much be on everything. What you don't want, and what we're going to be talking about today is, you don't want any logged in user to have everything everywhere. So this is the only downfall. Fortunately though, removing um, any logged in user is way easier and way, very much quicker, right? It's so much easier for me to click on remove and select this checkbox and then click remove. Then it is for me to go into my other one, the, the new brand new permission scheme, come into update, come down, try to figure out where the Jira add-on is. I think it's here, right? And then I got to click here and then I got to hit update. So you see the number of clicks and then I got to do it for each one. I don't think that juice is worth that squeeze. So, but just make a copy of the default one. You're going to thank me later. So I'm just going to call this one. It'll automatically add copy. So you don't even get to name it right away. So the first thing you want to do is once you make the copy, come over here, edit it, and then change it to whatever name you want. So this is just going to be demonstration default software scheme. Okay. I'll click on update on that. And then uh, feel free to change the description. I never do, but it just future self will always hate me because I never do that. Let's take a look at the permissions, right? Let's, let's look at these demonstrations and kind of deliver on what I was telling you that I was going to walk you through. So permission schemes have to be probably one of the most confusing things that people try to do. So I'm going to try to, in the next five minutes or so, I'm just trying to give you the highlights and give you what you need to know 
what's critical and, and just hopefully make managing permissions way easier for you. So the first thing is administer projects. This is very, very just obvious, but essentially what this administer projects does is when you go into a project, I'm just going to quickly open up a project. It will allow you on the left hand side to see project settings. So if you don't want somebody to be able to change the settings of the project, like the name, add components, add releases, add people, right? If you don't want people to do that, guess what? You're not going to want them to be able to administer the project. And now I haven't talked about this yet, but you should see at administrators as a role. So this corresponds to that global permission that we did in that last video where I have the permission of administrator. Okay. Who's an administrator will be defined in the next video. That's not in scope for this video. So in the next video, you're going to want to make sure you come back. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like, because in the next video, we're going to teach you then how do I now associate a person, an individual, somebody in my company to this, to these roles that I created. Make sure you come back for that. So anyways, that's the administer project. We'll leave that one alone. This one's out of the box. This is perfect because I only do want people that are in the role of administrator to be able to administer the project. Browse projects. This right here, most important out of all of them. If you take anything away from this video, it's the browse project. This this has to be the most critical permission po in, in all of these permission schemes here. Okay. So what the browse project does is it's a bouncer at a club. It is some it is a rule that stands in front of everybody and says, Do you meet the qualifications? Okay, and the qualifications are defined by project role over here on the right. So this bouncer is basically saying, are you any logged in user? Yes. Okay, you can pass and now you can see the project. This is good if you want any logged in user to see your projects. However, I have a funny feeling that you probably don't want just anybody and everybody in your company to be able to see your project. So first tip here is you're going to want to remove any logged in user from browse projects because that essentially will basically make it so that other people cannot see your project, right? But now the problem is nobody can see the project right now. So we're going to have to actually provide some power. We're going to have to update it. So the people that I want to be able to see the project are going to be in the role of administrators. And I, I unfortunately have to do this three times. The project role of developer. And then the, the project role of user, right? Because I, ha I want all of these three types of roles to be able to see the project. Whether I want them to create things or delete things or edit things, that happens later. That we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But at the very minimum, I want anybody who meets these three roles of whether they're an admin, read, write, delete, a developer, I'm expecting them to read and write, or a user, I'm expecting them to just read. I want them to at least be able to see the project. So that means that when they come to that bouncer, when they come to the club, the bouncer is going to say, okay, you're a developer, you can come in. You're a user, you can come in. If an individual doesn't meet, is not assigned one of these roles, they won't be able to come in. And then that, that right there is your gate, right? This is your gatekeeper and this will prevent unauthorized users from coming into your project. Now, this is where things get interesting. Once you made it into the project, right? So once you've actually made it past this bouncer check and you're in the project, now the any logged in user doesn't matter so much because even though it still says any logged in user, it's very misleading. It's not any logged in user. It's any logged in user that has made it past the authorization of the browse project. So my typical, because I do believe in like openness, I will leave this basically the way it is right now. I won't touch a single uh, setting. And so I'll walk you through some of the settings and tell you why. But essentially, I want any but logged in user, whether they're a developer, a, a user, or an administrator, to be able to manage the sprints, to be able to, this aggregated data, it's completely new. It's still not something that has a lot of impact. Development tools, they can view the development tools. The read-only workflow, they can do that. Where things get more interesting is in the issue permissions. Down here is where you might have a difference of opinion. Here's where you're like, well, what's the point of having a user role, right? I don't want my users that that have the user role to be able to create issues. So simply put, I can just delete it here, right? And 
in under create, I can now just say, well, you have to be in the role of administrator and you have to be in the role of developer. So this right here basically is define a read or write, right? The other thing that you want is to basically do your edit issues. You don't want your users to, to edit your issues. You're going to remove any logged in user here and you're going to do project role administrator and then project role developers. Now, I stated, and I, now I'm, I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I typically don't have like the roles of, of administrator, developer, and user. I typically just have like administrator and everybody else. So when you're everybody else, you won't be able to delete stuff. I do reserve that for the administrator. You won't be able to administer the project. I do reserve that for the administrator. But everything else, whether you're creating, you're being assigned, you're assigning issues, you're closing, you're resolving, you're setting the dates, all of that stuff, that can usually be open up to pretty much everybody in the project because as long as you you've passed that first gate of browse permission i believe you should be able to do pretty much everything but delete and obviously administer the project but if that's not that's not how you want to roll um, that's cool so essentially now you just have to configure each one of these the so the assignable user will go through these is so that the individual can be actually assigned. So that means that they can take ownership, they can be given ownership of an issue. The assigned issues basically means that I can now pick somebody's name and give that issue to them. Closed issues is the person that will finally move something to an actual, the final status. Now, the difference between close and resolve still blows my mind. I don't know what's the difference here. I'll have to Google it one day, but just take, just take for now, just understand that close and resolve a little bit farther down should be treated as one and the same, at least for now. Uh, create is self-explanatory, right? They'll be able to create the issue. Delete, I'm going to be able to delete. Now, edit is kind of interesting, right? So you may find yourself in opportunities where you want someone to be able to create the issue, but not delete it um, or vice versa, right? Maybe you don't want them creating issues, but you want them interacting with issues that exist already. So that's what you want that setting for. Link issues is to literally connect issue A with issue B. Modify reporter is automatically the person that clicks the create button becomes the reporter. Sometimes they're doing that on behalf of somebody else. And so if you want them to be able to change the who the reporter is, you'll want to make sure they have this power. Move issues. This one's tricky. So this is basically serves two purposes. It serves the purpose of move, which is the obvious change it from project A to project B. With the caveat being they need to have the power in both the destination and the source. But more importantly, if they ever want to change the issue type, they'll need the move issues permission as well. Now, this does come with a little bit of a caveat. Sometimes it is a bad thing for developers or teams to change the issue type, right? To go from a bug to a task or a story to a bug. So you may want to consider limiting this one because sometimes it has negative consequences. For example, if you have different workflows between your stories and your bugs, it's going to impact that. So you want to make sure that, th that you're okay with that. Resolve, as I mentioned, this is, in my opinion, this is essentially the close, but it'll give you the opportunity to set a fixed version here. Schedule issues, this is important. So if you want your developers or team to put a due date on stuff, they need to be able to have the schedule issues. Set issue security, this is something that I would probably give just to the administrator because this will allow you to essentially uh, lock issues up. So you don't want just anybody to be able to do this. This is this. In fact, I would probably even go a step further and give this only to site administrators. You don't want just anybody off the street to be able to set lock issues up because that's a very bad thing. And then transition issues. Obviously, this should be open for everybody because you want them to be able to transition from status to status. Going down these other items, they're a lot less important, right? These are just who can manage the watchers, who who's going to get notifications, who can view the voters and the watchers, right? Who can actually see that they're a watcher, that they voted on an issue. On the comments, the only thing here is delete all comments. I reserve it for administrators, but anybody should be able to add a comment. Anybody should be able to delete their own comment. Okay. So don't, don't confuse the two. This is not delete all the comments from any ticket should be reserved for an administrator. Delete your own comments. If you make a mistake, you should be able to delete them. So this is usually edit um, a lot for anybody. Same thing with edit all comments, right? You want this to be reserved for the administrator and then edit own comments. You want this, hey, if you if you made a, if you typo something up, you should be able to go in and edit. Similar story comes down to the attachments, right? Um, so I'm, not, I'm just gonna skip through that. And then the last section here is the time tracking. So very, very similar stuff where 
If you're using time tracking, which basically allows you to put hours against how long it took you to do an issue, you want to leave the obvious ones that are delete all, edit all to the admins, but then you want to let everybody else kind of edit and do their own thing. So as long as it says own, it's okay for it to be open to any logged in user. But here you have like kind of full range to get as granular as you want. And that's pretty much it. Those are all the different permissions and some of my recommendations for what you should be considering when setting up your permission scheme. In the next video for next week, we'll talk about how do we put it all together? How does this now get associated to a project? How do we actually give people the roles that we just defined? And so you're going to want to make sure you come back for that. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have special uh, project schemes that you'd like to share with the community, let me know in the comment section as well. Um, what are, what's your favorite feature? What's your biggest uh, pain point here with permission schemes? I'd like to know. Let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.